Now, um, Shalom, once again, this is a continuation of the Rastafari revelation, as well as a continuation of the mystery of God, the mystery of God. Now, let's um, bring our scriptures and our reference, and we're going to um, continue with L.O.J. hieroglyphically explain and the symbology and an interpretation of the application is the main thing, the application for us in the present time, because the apps are very, very important. But this area that we said we would continue on is um, John, um, not John, but uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Well, John chapter 16, John, the Gospel of John 16 is important. Put that in your note and in in, in the reference, because that there's where Christ, he um, proclaims and, and, and foresees, you understand, the Son of Man fulfilling the fatherhood of God. And that fatherhood of God we see as manifesting in the father of true righteous Africa, you understand, or the father often called the father of modern Africa, but not in this modern, postmodern. We're in a postmodern time, so we're beyond the modern times. But the father of modern Africa in those days and that time is. Or as Imperial Majesty Han Salasi the first. Now, what's interesting is that here in our continuation of this teaching from um, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where Bamarinya reads, um, and then it breaks it down in this prosaic, a prosaic way. Um, poetry and certain prose and even certain writings in the scriptures, a prosaic way. And there we can better understand it because of how it is broken down in meter and in verse. Um, let me just show those of y'all there this particular area. This is a particular area, if you can see how it's broken down in this particular stacking in a kind of a stacking way. You understand how the verses are stacked on top of each other. You understand this is uh first Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen, according to the Metzahaf Kedus, or the book of the seven seals, the revised and hard Bible, the Metzahaf Kedus. Now, as we now compare it um with the English and in our new parallel Bible version series, you can go to www lojsociety.org and you can order a study copy of the parallel Bibles where you can have them hark, them hark in one column and the English in the next. This is how we critically, when we are studying in you know, scriptures at more of the higher levels in the in the school of books, you know what I'm saying, which is a higher level, especially dealing with them hark. But right now, ones and ones are free, you understand, know to acquire these copies. You understand, know, of the Met of Caduce, of the Book of the Seven Seals, especially the different areas of Scripture. We just completed um, the the Mesmora Dawit, the Mesmora Dawit, and we've shown that in another particular video. But let's continue here with the mystery of God, but actually the mystery of godliness. Here, Bamarinya says, Now, these three. These particular three um, um, words form a phrase, and this phrase has a certain pe peculiar meaning that it should be contrasted with the King James Version of the Bible. Here, Bamarinya in the Amharic, or the Metzhaf Kedus, says, Egezi Abi Herenim, ye mem sel mishtir, ye mem sel mishtir. Now, it says, of Exiavi here or Exiavi here is mystery of resembling Exiavi here. And Exiavi here is the Ethiopic name for Yahweh, the Ethiopic name for Ha Elohim, the true God, or the Ha Shem. It's the name of God before the primordial name of God, before the creationist present world system of dispensation that we are now in. Now, the meaning of this rather than the mystery of godliness as we have in King James, we would have it as 
the mystery of resembling God. Now, it's interesting for us to define what the word uh, mishtir or mystery is. Now, we wrote it up here in the last section, um, mishtir or mystery. Mystery, the root of mystery. Please look up the etymological root for yourself of the word mystery. Now, mystery goes back to the word myth. But now myth has is a postmodern meaning of myth, which means something false and fictitious. So if we're talking about mythology, you say, oh, that's false and fictitious, that's not real. But what they don't understand is that it's only in postmodern times that the meaning of the word myth has been changed by connotation and ignorance, popular ignorance from the ancient um, meanings that are encoded in symbols to mean something to the effect of uh, false fiction, you know, the, like a make-believe. But truly myth is at the root, or mutos, mythos is at the root of the word, the word we have today of mystery. So now there's a mystery of resembling God, or egziyari hernem ye memsala mishtir yalet erter talakna. Without controversy, without any sort of doubt, agodi is, is no doubt in it, without any sort of dispute, there's a mystery of resembling God. Now, to ionize Rastafari, we see this mystery of resembling God to be fulfilled in the person of his imperial majesty, Karamawi Halasalase. This is one reason why the 12 tribes of Israel had it, and still if they keep to it, they have it right where they say greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, this day revealed in the person of the line of tribe of Judah, Ketamal, Rehan, Selassie, elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia. That's a very important witness within the revelation of Aras Tefari. Now some would say, well, this 12 tribe says that. But that comes out of the revelation of Rastafari to the lost sheep in the Americas and the Caribbean. It's important that we recognize that Rastafari, this idea of Rastafari, does not just originate in Jamaica. But Jamaica is important in a particular revelation and manifestation of Rastafari as well as in the Americas. You know what I'm saying? So this is why we have to really know who we are, you understand, and also study history from our perspective and seeing our ancestors and the important people and the great things and what they have done for this way of life that we can call generally an Ethiopian Hebrew way of life. That's what encompasses all. But now we as a people in particular, as Aras Tefari, which I and I see as being that Chiruyan or that elect, we have a particular responsibility vis-a-vis -vis God and Jah, the King of Kings. Because remember the psalm that says that um, in Judah, in Yehuda is God known. His name is great in Israel. So though his name is great in Israel, he is known in Judah. And this particular, we need to understand that through the tribe of Judah, what distinguished Judah from Israel was its um, the covenant that was made with the house of David and and manifested in the monarchy. The Judahites hold to the monarchy of David, to the monarchy of Great King David, and in this prophetic and uh, uh, revelatory time. That monarchy of David in these latter days has been represented and is represented by the king of kings of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie I, and by that particular Ethiopia. You understand? That particular Ethiopia, because we've grown and become wise enough to recognize that, well, not all Ethiopians are really Ethiopian in the same sense that not all Israelites are truly Israel in the true spiritual sense. So this allows us to be more discriminating in the sense of distinguishing one thing from the next. So the core that we're holding to is that African Zion, that African Zion. But now we as Rastafari, different than the black Hebrew Israelites, Lemisale, for example. They hold to some of the basic same precepts that we do, but when we discuss Haile Selassie, when we discuss Ethiopia, many of them have been taught to disagree. Now we recognize COINTELPRO has worked in many 
many deceptive ways to divide and conquer us because the older elders from the 1930s like Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew or um, um, there's uh, Brother Arno also called Rabbi Arno Ford you understand just to name a few um, of the important people in our history particularly as the African Americans you understand who firstly were Ethiopianists then um, grew to recognize their Ethiopian Hebrew identity and some have branched off in different directions of um, of uh, interpretation of this way of life you understand now that diversity is our greatest strength but at the core of it must be these teachings you understand must be these particular teachings because at the core of it this will help us to distinguish the true from the false now here in scripture where it speaks about the mystery of godliness we need to make a note of it and please make a note in your study books or your study diaries or your copy book or journals but in a set aside area you understand for such notes and such studies and such even you know machinations and reasoning sometimes you write a little something there and then you go back to it and then your, your notes there will help you in something that has been revealed to you in the present time this is why um, taking notes good notes we we, inf we highly emphasize that but, but a note at this particular point should be the mystery of godliness now through the Ethiopic or the Royal and Hark or the Metaf Caduce, we find that a clearer interpretation of that would be the mystery of resembling, resembling or looking like God. The resembling, resembling, looking like God. Well, God, we recognize the, beyond the, 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 the physical misinterpretations that much of idolatry and other, other, other um, going astrays have produced, God is spirit and truth. So these teachings at their core, the resemblance of God, is not just through physical attributes or, or characteristics, but they're spiritual. You know, saying they're spiritual at their heart, and they're spiritual at their at their core. Now, the mystery of godliness, more properly interpreted, would be the mystery of resembling Egeziabi here, the mystery of resembling the true God, the Hashem. And here, it, when it breaks it down in this prosaic way, there are six, six um, two-part phrases. The first is that siga yetegelete, that siga yetegelete. King James says God was manifested in the flesh, and that is close. That siga in the flesh yetegelete, he was he was revealed. Some would say it was revealed when they want to take away person, the person of God. You understand? And particularly that male and fatherly person of God. You understand? Then it goes on to state that justified in the spirit, justified in the spirit, the menfes yetzedek, in the menfes, in the ruach, according to the Hebrew, Yes, it was made righteous. It was made law abiding. It was made in conformity, you understand, with his law, with the true law of the spirit, with the with, with truth. It was balanced in the spirit. King James, he says, justified, made righteous or justified in the spirit. The next is the third is le melaikt yetaya. Seen of angels, seen of angels, the Melaikt, the Melaikt Yetaya was seen of the, of the angels in the plural sense. Now it's interesting because this phrase of angels, you understand, know also has, remember, angel at its root does not mean pudgy, fat, white babies or something like that. That's all a part of anti Christendom. You understand? Know Angels in its root means messenger, like a, a, a melaak, like the name of the one who was sent, you understand, to be his majesty's representative to black America, and that was Dr. Melaku Emmanuel Bayan, or Dr. Melaku Bayan. He was sent to us, and his name, too, means his angel, Melaku. 
his angel. And that's important when we look in Torah and we see that the Israelites were told that when they came out of Egypt, though they were not in the promised land yet, they were out of Egypt, much like black people were out of that house of bondage, the, the overt physical form of slavery. They were now passing through this wilderness. And the Almighty said that he would send an angel to guide the people. But they should listen. They should shima. They should heed to that angel. You understand? Because that angel wasn't about forgiving them or whatever. The angel was strictly to be a messenger to guide. Now, angel at its root is messenger. And this is where we get ang and and angelos, angelos within the other languages, the Eurocentric languages, right? But it's rooted means messenger. We too who proclaim the message in that way are interpretively and mystically speaking angels. In other words, messengers. One who is a messenger in the root of the meaning is an angel. So therefore we should not always assume some hyper spiritualized or, or like some type of fantasy Disney kind of a fantasy of an angel or something like that. We have to be grounded. You understand? Know Remember what this verse fifteen says that the house of God is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground, the pillar and the ground of the truth. The pillar and the ground of the truth. So he was seen by the messengers. You know and in this sense, we see as his imperial majesty, Aras Tafari Mekonen, and Kedamari Hamsalasi was manifested, there came forward angels or messengers or proclaimers of Rastafari. You know what I'm saying? Well before, actually, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey would be, in a sense, kind of a Johnny-come-lately, in a sense, of the proclamation of Rastafari. There were others who already were proclaiming this black man who was crowned king, you understand, and the connection with Ethiopia and the Bible and Queen of Sheba and all of that to people who were told they were nothing but N-words, but niggers. And you know what I mean? They had no history, no culture, no greatness. They did nothing. They would never amount to nothing. Once they were brought out of that spiritual bondage, many started to look to the east, and they saw Adamawi Hala Salasi, they saw Aras Tefari. So these are the angels who, who see now God's sign, God's point man, the son of man. You understand? And then the next verse says, after seeing of the angels, it says, preached to the Gentiles. Bamarinya be ahizab yetesabaka. Be ahizab yetesabaka. Preached to um the Gentiles, or amongst the Gentiles, you understand, or even by, it can also be interpretively by the Gentiles. And it's interesting that we find that in the latter days, it will be white missionaries who were proclaiming a once black truth and reality to some of the people who once ancestors knew it, but went astray after heathenism and after paganism and certain forms of African idolatry and really going back to the old, you understand, the older forms of worship that had already been worn out, you understand, the old degenerate mother goddesses and, and different cults and the nature goddesses and the spirits, so forth and so on, that had already been overcome, you understand, by the new. In other words, it's like once you make it to college, right, and you start attending college, why would you go back to high school to take your classes? You know, or go back to kindergarten, in a sense. I mean, in a serious way, and say, this is the real education. Forget all that other stuff after you've already gone. You see how that would be backwards. Kindergarten was important, but it, as it says, be children in wrath, but not in knowledge. In other words, we must be children in wrath, you know, forgiving our wendemoch, our hitoch, you know, in Christ, many things. You understand, but not children in knowledge. You understand, not to take this 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 mature thing, this this grown folks thing, and and making a a mockery out of it. So among the Gentiles or by the Gentiles, he was preached. Christ was preached. You understand, and even in this day and time, Rastafari revelation, Rastafari is preached or is proclaimed. We proclaim it. We're not forcing on you. We're not going to do like these counterfeit Christians did, take swords and make you and chop you up and stuff like all this kind of inquisition and brutality. You understand? No, because that's Christ in pretense. But in sincerity, we proclaim it. And ones can either accept it you understand, or reject it, which brings us 
also full cipher with the Ephraim and Manasseh that we started out on as we continue the LOJ hieroglyphically explained. We have Ephraim, which is, refers to the will. Ephraim, which means the plus or adding to affirmation, doubly fruitful, and Manasseh, forgetfulness, you understand, or denial. So we have the minus. So we have the two aspects, affirmation and denial. And it's very important for us to understand that in the context of the flail, which would be denial, and the shepherd's crook, which would be affirmation, or the L and the J. In other words, these two these are two apps that we need to understand in our heart and our mind, especially as newborns, as being born again. You know, and this is why we actually got on this area of the scripture to continue from the beginning step under the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary that we're going to hopefully pick up on again. Now, the, we got two more aspects here. We have believed on. It says believed on. In the world, Bamaringa it says Baalem, Baalem Yetamene, Baalem Yetamene. Now the the Alem or the world. Some say Baalem, but that's re, that's misreading the the Ain, the Ain Ah coming from the good is Baalem, the Alem Yetamene. You, some will tell you that these letters all have the same sound. Only when you have not been taught properly, you understand they all have the same sound. You understand? And this also takes away from the purity, you understand, and the beauty even of the language. Just a, just a word even to the homegrown folks. But anyway, the Alam Yatamina, in other words, he was admitted on, you understand, faith was exercised, he was, the, he was faithful, you understand, the Alam. He was admitted on the Alam. So you can see there's different, there's different, um, Levels of interpretation, but they all refer essentially to the same reality. So when people say there's only one interpretation, there's only one interpretation in the sense of the realm of truth. But in that realm of truth, there are, there are levels, you understand, and one must understand that. Even look at this, in the world, he was faithful. It can be interpreted. Or in the world, you understand, you understand, in the world, he was believed. You understand? So you have to understand those, those, those new, but it means both. It means, it means actually both. Now, the last one is Be'kubr Yarge. Be'kubr Yarge. Be'kubr Yarge. He was received up into glory. He was received. Really, Bamaringa it says Yarge from the Arge, which means he 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 ascended. He went up in up up in those degrees. He ascended. Arge, Ma'arig, Yamarig is more song of degrees or song of ascents. Ascents. So there's an ascension. He he in glory. In Kuba, remember when Christ prayed? He prayed about the glory. He said, you glorified me before, glorify me now again. And he also told his disciples and apostles, too, about the glorification of the body. And, and the glory is that final degree, that final level. But we can interpret for our application glory as honor, as honor. So what we're learning is about the duty, you understand, as well as the honor, you understand, to now be honored. You understand, by God, you understand, is, is what we look forward but to honor him, you understand, and honor those who are to honor, you understand, but also recognize that the kubr or the, the, the glory has more of a meaning, there's a more of a fullness than in English. For example, when some people hear glory, they have to um, remember that glory and honor is the same thing. Glory and honor is really the same key word, Bamarinya, even in the Hebrew, in the Shemitic. But in the English sense, people wrestle over one particular word or the next, but in translated sense, you understand, both the word glory and honor is one and the same word. You understand, but within the Ethiopic and Shemitic sense, those meanings are all like spiritually embedded in the word in the word. So as we meditate this and as we study and hopefully as you continue in your discipleship studies, you will get this. It will almost be almost automatic. You'll start to pick up even when you hear certain words of the vibration, the word sound and power in that particular word. But the first level is that study level. 
And so here we just wanted to go over briefly the mystery of godliness and to point out that each of these six aspects of the mystery of godliness we see fulfilled in Ras Teferi Mekonin or Ras Teferi Makonin, you know, who is Ketamawi Haile Selassie, who we know now as Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, that each of these he fulfilled, therefore fulfilling the mystery of godliness. And to also prove that when we call ourselves the mystery shul or the mystery school of the King of Kings and his Christ, that ones who get it twisted about mystery because all they know or all they're focusing on is the mystery of iniquity. Yes, there's a mystery of iniquity. That means that mythologically there are types that when we go back in time and look at the mythological types then, and we look at even Revelation, we see these very same mythical types, the dragon, the old dragon, the serpent, the apophis, and so forth and so on. But if you didn't understand, if you pretend like you didn't understand the beginning, how are you going to overstand the end? And there's something else we was talking about with the rapture, because spiritually speaking, we're in that time of rapture. Because rapture means to be taken up into the spirit. The spirit is the spirit of God, is, is a consciousness. You know, we're saying it's a spiritual new birth. You know, saying those who desire to learn of the King of Kings and his Christ and are learning and growing recognize that, that newness, you know, saying of spirit, that newness of spirit. So now this brings us full circle, or at least full cipher, we, we, we hope. We hope this brings us full cipher with another aspect that we would like to continue on at this point. Um, and this is now to continue where we was at in Ephraim in the Metaphysical um, Bible Dictionary, this document right here, where it says um, we was at, we left off, uh, the first step that a beginner in truth takes is to set up a new and better state of consciousness based on the absolute. So a lot of folks talk about being conscious you know what I'm saying? But it's not based on the absolute. It's based on their own, I hate to say it, but ignorance, what they ignore or what they plainly don't know. That's what ignorance is, is not knowing, you know what I'm saying, or ignoring. It could either be a willful act or it could be something that happens unwillingly. But the fact that it happens, you know what I'm saying, that brings one into a whole set of spiritual liabilities. You understand? And that's what also block the assets, the spiritual assets or, or certain blessings. And this is where we have to do some work. People say, it's about grace, no work. That aspect that he saves us by grace is already done when we now have, have, have a desire for him and we turn to him, but we have to learn and grow. You cannot, and there is work. It says to work out your salvation. He said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So how can they say we accept this word that Paul said, but we don't accept this word that Paul said because we want to play Paul against James, you understand, like a bunch of ignoramuses, you understand? But no wonder that one of their greatest teachers was named um, Ignatius, for, just, just for example, although he, he, he regurgitated some important things, but he also opposed um, the Christian Gnostics. And thereby, this is where the teachings of Paul took on a different, because Paul has, since it's so wise, since there's so much wisdom to it, the mystery is so much in what Paul says, because that's the wisdom that, that the Most High gave him in Christ, that it's easy for those who love philosophy to kind of take Paul's stuff, you understand, and then write over their own meanings. But then if you take that interpretation and put it in light of everything else, it doesn't make no sense. You understand? It almost sounds like one was arguing with himself when it was writing. You understand? But when you put it in this proper context, then all in all, then it is sitsum. Then it is paitum. 